welcome back to my channel if you're new hello my name is Sarah and I'm so glad you clicked on today's video today I'm going to be doing a tour of my 2022 Kia Telluride S if you are new to my channel I used to drive this 2017 Subaru Outback and I recently just got a new car and this is my mom's car now so I thought I would give you a tour I actually haven't seen a lot of Telluride tours on the internet and if you're looking for a video on like specs and all that I'm not your gal this is just like the interior and features I like about it so yeah I have like a mid to lower trim level so this is not like all tricked out but it has a lot of things that I love you'll notice if you go back and watch my tour of my old car that I actually downgraded in some areas but I still really love this car and I wanted to show you guys so Let's get into the tour. A couple questions I'm just gonna answer right off the bat so you know these are all disclaimers. One, this is not my house. It's my neighbor's house, so you're not getting my address or anything like that, so don't worry about that. Another thing is I know a lot of people block out license plates and stuff like that, and honestly, it doesn't really matter because everybody sees your license plate on the road anyway, so the fact that you'd blur it out kind of doesn't make sense. Anybody could look your up at your information at any time. Of course, I'm not asking you to go look me up and all that, but Blacking out a license plate is kind of dumb because everybody sees it when you're on the road. I will go over, this car was priced at 35,000, a little bit above 35,000. I'm not saying this to brag, this is just a review of the car and I want you guys to know. But because of the chip shortage that is going on, all cars are selling above MSRP and this was the hottest SUV of the year, two years running. So this one obviously was selling much higher above um, MSRP, so. But MSRP was 35,000 without the chip shortage but obviously there's a chip shortage and there's a shortage on these particular cars so good luck getting one this is in the color glacial white pearl which is also a very popular color and i didn't get any nightfall edition or anything because again msrp was very high so i didn't want to spend more money than i had to for cosmetic stuff but as for stuff i've already done to it I got rubber floor mats from WeatherTech and I got a cargo cover and I also got a cargo liner but our package was shipped from Canada to um, a Telluride owner in Sterling, Virginia and it got lost so we are currently working on getting that fixed but as of right now I don't have the cargo liner. Um, as of things I want to do to it, there's a couple things that I'm thinking about but for right now the only things that are certain that I'm doing are blacking out the Telluride and Kia logo and just so we can discuss the elephant in the room I have a pimple patch on my face because the mask mandate is back and that means my acne is too so you can unlock and lock the car with this button right here so I just locked all the doors and if I pushed it again I would unlock all of them as for the side door panels there's not a whole lot going on I keep my car pretty clean but I got a black interior so you know it's obviously dirty but You've got the child lock and window lock. So this locks the back doors from them being able to get out themselves and the windows at the same time. And then all four windows are automatic. And then you've got your lock and unlock for all the doors and your mirrors. And if you went a trim level up, there's a button for your windows to, or your mirrors to go in, but your girl didn't get that one. So yeah, also you can upgrade to Harman Kardon. I had Car Harman Kardon or I have Harman Kardon in that car, but um, it's not mine anymore. So the sound quality is honestly fine without it. Um, but I mean, that car did have very nice sound and bass for sure. So this is just like the basic Telluride badged audio. So in the side cubby, they're kind of small for drinks, honestly, like not gonna lie. I don't, you could fit a water bottle in there, but probably not much more. So I have a hand sanitizer, cause you know, global panorama and a like big umbrella, which I haven't actually used, but I've been caught with my pants down with no umbrella too many times. And it's honestly awful. So I keep one in here in case I need one. And I also have one in my trunk but that one's more accessible to me. And then this is just a regular mask that just fell on the ground. So the in the S trim model, the driver's seat is automatic and the rest are manual. In my Outback, all of them were automatic. And honestly, I kind of like manual better because it's faster. Like you have to wait for this and you don't have to wait for that one. So I kind of like that better. Um, another thing I don't have in this car that I did have in my last car was memory seat. So there was two buttons right here and you could like set two drivers to sit in this chair. So now I don't have that, so you have to manually do it. But again, that's just lazy. Like, it's not a big deal. Obviously, I can do that. So these are my WeatherTech floor mats. I love them. My Outback came with all weather mats. This one did not, but 
these were not terribly expensive and honestly any rubber floor mat versus carpet is a lot better and so much nicer because you don't have to worry about getting wet like all that stuff it just shakes out and you can rinse it this is also the all-wheel drive version which costs more but we always get all-wheel drive cars simply because we drive a lot in the winter and we have my mom's from upstate new york and my dad's from cleveland and you know they they know about snow and they always get all-wheel drive cars these seats are super comfortable these are the synthetic leather my old car i keep saying my old car she's right there but this car does not have real leather and i've actually noticed that using leather cleaner in here doesn't work because it's obviously not real leather and it actually just makes it super oily which is interesting so getting in this is the driver's seat when you first open the door obviously it's push button so you just put your foot on the brake and you turn it on for the control panel, there is actually already a recall on the 2022s because this screen just sometimes randomly turns off, which is uber annoying. Um, so there's already a recall on that and I'm set to go get mine fixed um, this Friday. So no big deal, but it is kind of annoying and obviously the Telluride owners noticed. So, you know, obviously up here, it's just your normal gauges and everything like that. Of course, you know, you have some driver's assist stuff and then, you know, your drive mode, your fuel economy, your trip info, which I think is interesting. So they do a drive info. So that's from like when your car turns off to on, it'll tell you the time and your mileage and all that. So yeah, that is kind of what the middle, a brief rundown of the middle um, console. I'm not gonna bore you with like all the stuff that a normal car has like lights and windshield, but this is all Bluetooth stuff. And then this is to control here. And also your adaptive cruise control is on this side as well. As for down here, you can turn off your lane assist and your parking blind spot monitor is down here as well as, I guess, your ambient lighting, like how bright you want it. But this car doesn't even have ambient lighting, so I don't know why that button is even there. As for up here, you just have like a basic little card holder, a little tiny light, and when you open this, the light goes on. And when you close it, it goes off. There is a sunglass holder up here that I keep my Ray-Ban sunglasses in and just a cleaning cloth. There is a sunroof in this model. It is not like a moon roof, so it's just a tiny little sunroof and that is how you open it right there. And then this button turns on both lights or you can turn on each one manually. This is your Uvo in case you get lost or like in a car accident actually. I've got the garage door opener for my nanny family and for my actual house on the driver's side door panel it's the exact same except all they have is their window control and to lock all the doors so this is the infotainment center it has apple carplay so if you hook up your apple or android phone it has android auto um you can just use your phone as normal up here but you have the option to have two driver settings so if you you know have two drivers so that's me and then i can change the user to alex as well on here because we are the two that drive this car the most so i mean it has navigation all that some of the key features for moms and for nannies that i would like to point out that are awesome is quiet mode will bring all the sound of the car up to the front so you don't have any sound in the back which is really nice and then rear climate controls you can control the climate from up here for the rear which is really nice and then passenger talk is super cool when i turn that on you can hear it it's like an echo this is a three row car, so if the sound is playing and there's a lot of music, I've actually used this a couple times with friends, um, you can talk to them if they're in the back and they can hear you, which is awesome. And then I think the last notable one is the sounds of nature. It's literally a sound machine in the car. So sounds of nature, lively forest, calming sea waves, cafe, warm fireplace. So, I mean, I think that would put you to sleep as a driver, but I think for kids, that's a great option to have. There are three air vents in the front middle and then two, one on either side. This is super, gets super cold in my opinion. To turn them off, you actually like push it all the way to the side and it closes them. So if you push them all the way like this, it's closed. And then if you open them like this, then obviously opens. Um, but you can close all three of these and, or none of them. And then that one as well. You can just close the little dial. These are all your rear climate controls, obviously, and in this model, you only have heated seats, not ventilated seats, but if you had ventilated seats, you would pull it down for ventilated. This button doesn't go down, but you'd pull down for ventilated and pull up for 
or heated so obviously i got this car a month ago so i haven't used the heat or anything like that yet but you know eventually one day we'll have to use that and then the center honestly it's like a basic car the clutch um this middle thing right here you push down and this is where you connect your carplay so your obviously your usb there's a 12 volt in here and as, as well as another usb that just connects like for charging so you can charge two phones up here and a wireless charging pad right here as well and i normally keep this open but apparently people steal charging cords like we'll break into your car to steal charging cords so i've kept that open um, I've seen a couple people on the Telluride group using this as an air conditioner, or uh, air conditioner, as a hand sanitizer little, like, holder, but I don't use it as that. I just have a mask in there for quick, easy grabs. And then there's two cup holders here, and these are all your driving modes. So, if I had a higher trim level, this button would be a camera button, so that I could see 360 view of my camera, but in this model, you only have a backup camera, which is fine. So the rest of these buttons, this is your driving mode and you push this to lock the all wheel drive on. And these are just different. So comfort's how I always keep it. They're sport, smart, adapts to how you drive and like picks your driving mode basically based on how you drive. I think sport just like takes some features down to make it go a little bit faster. Eco would save you some gas and then snow would be snow. So I always keep in comfort, but you've got that this is auto hold off which means that the car will not turn off when you um stop sometimes so this car in comfort mode and i bet eco will turn off at a stop sign or a stoplight to save gas so if you don't want that to happen you can turn it off auto hold is when you put your foot down on the brake fully this will turn engage and you won't have to keep your foot on the brake when you're stopped i use that quite a bit and then i think this is just like parking assist off which i don't know why you'd want that and then obviously your parking brake pulling up for the lock and pulling pushing down to get it off actually i think you just pull up to get it off and then once you put it in drive it'll yeah it turns off so haven't used that yet but fun as for the center console you have two cup holders in the back and then obviously this opens and you've got a bunch of space this is actually super big so i actually keep a abyssal hand vacuum in here i will link it down below it's great for black interiors because i'm ocd and i see this stuff and i can just vacuum it up and i don't have to see it or think about it obviously it's not the most powerful vacuum but it definitely works for little messes so I have that and you can charge it through USB so very handy um, a parking ticket we're keeping it real um, this is the charging cord for the vacuum and I also have like one of the attachments for it as well because it has like a longer attachment to use for different areas um, again global panorama i have masks i have stamps in case i go and i have to send a letter i have post-its and a pen in case i need to write down insurance information this is an extra usb cord and alex's sunglasses another pair of sunglasses and i have two more sunglasses up here i'm not actually addicted to sunglasses it's just i have a bunch in here because i get worried about leaving my ray-bans in here as for like you know break-in stuff and then this wallet has nothing in it but coins, so if someone stole it... Oh, it has a Metro card in it, but this is just coins for parking. And then I have a bunch of these. These are really funny. Alex and I got these. They're super funny. I will link them below. It's just something you could put on someone's windshield wiper, and it says, Attention, you park like an idiot. Flip over to see the reason, and you can check off all of these. So, yeah. I actually haven't used them yet. I think it's, you know... Obviously, you have to be choosy with that stuff. I feel like some people would actually get mad if you put that on their car. But I have like 50 of them, so I will be using them. Just haven't haven't worked up the courage yet. As for rear passenger door amenities, same thing. Side cubby with a little water bottle holder, a, win a window control. These are automatic and they go all the way down, which I feel like is pretty standard nowadays, but it used to not be. The back's obviously tinted and then yeah that's basically all that there is to this door panel 
And then this is the back seat. I have the captain's chairs version. The S model doesn't come with the bench. Um, as far as I understand it, you have to go a model above or below. The base model is the LX, and in the LX you can get a bench seat. And I know in the EX you can get a bench seat, but I actually really like the captain's chairs. So for moms, there's lower anchors and top tether anchors in both of these chairs. And the lower anchors are so easy to get to. Like, I can feel them right here. It's not like you have to dig to Mars to get them, which is really nice. Because in some cars, you do have to dig to Mars to get them. The back of the seats are plastic which i really like because you can wipe it clean they have these really cute leather back pockets which honestly i don't really use that much and grocery bag hangers so yeah they also each have usbs in the back seats which is really awesome because two people can charge their stuff back here and they have a 12 volt back here as well i know in the higher trim levels of this car there are also sunshades in the back so that is something to consider if you are interested in that the back seats also have armrests that go down like such and can be positioned at any angle you want them and lock and obviously they stow up like that and the seats also move forward and back as well to access the third row you push this and hold it and this whole seat can come up and here's your third row it's a 60 40 split so this seat can go up by itself or that those two can go up together as you can see there are top two top tethers in the back here and there's more market hooks obviously and i believe there are lower anchors in the back as well people from the back can also pull these red straps to move it um if need be and obviously you just push this back and lock it into place for it to go back to where you want it for moms looking at this car there is no car seat friendly tilt that will not compromise the anchors so you can't there that's just not an option in this car which i learned the hard way trying to move that seat for passengers when the car seat was in so that is not an option in this car you can also obviously move it forward and back and this is another way to get the front seat to move so you can reach it from here or from there and to put the seat all the way forward and flat you pull the lever and the seat goes flat and you have a big space as well as the same over there. I am 5'2", so I am not the person to ask about like comfort because I'm basically comfortable anywhere. Um, but this seat is not even all the way back, I don't think. The front seat and I have, I mean, worlds of room. And my knees barely touch the back seats in the third row as well. So that is something to consider that it's got a lot of room as well as ceiling vents. These are a big deal for like, especially for... Um, rear facing passengers to have air is super nice and they're very powerful as well as when you're napping in the front and you're not supposed to put your seat down just because of accidents but if you are sleeping and you put the seat in the back or in the front down you can actually get air on your face from that which is super nice and you got two big lights in the back as well and they can control their own climate also, you can have it go forward or under, and it's actually very powerful under as well, so that is always good. I don't know if you can lock these or not. I'd have to look into that, but um, they can control them from the back too. So this is what a Graco Extend to Fit looks like in the captain's chair. It fits 100% on the chair, barely, barely. No, I wouldn't even count that as any overhang at all, but you do need to keep about 80% of the seat on the chair if you do have overhang, but this has zero overhang at all in the sixth position of orientation, which um, the little girl who sits in here is three and a half, so she doesn't need anything like special. But yeah, her extent of fit fits great in here. Obviously there's a detachable headrest in this seat, in all the seats I think. No, not in the, the back does not have a detachable headrest, but this one, these two do. So yeah, she's very comfortable in here. And again, she has a lot of room and I use this to hang her backpack from school, which is super nice. Obviously she's a nanny family, so I don't travel with her long distances, but I wouldn't see why she wouldn't be comfortable in here. And she literally has air blowing directly on her, which I know she likes because in her old car or in my old car, she always said she was hot. And I just put my own sunshade in there, honestly, not a big deal doesn't look that tacky you also have the oshit um <laughs> handles on either side as well as the top so this helps you hoist yourself in and out because this car is kind of high and it's actually like a rubberized material so it's like kind of like non-slip which is cool 
my only qualm with the back seat is I'm pretty short but these are the cup holders for the back there's none in the middle so I mean you could do have to kind of reach to get your drink if it's back here but also is great when you get Starbucks for multiple people because you can just put it all in there and then you're on your way so I do not use the third row of this car very often at all and so obviously I don't have it up um, but I have the cargo rat or cargo cover on it and this is a huge open space the seats go up by pulling those two tethers in the back your passengers have a USB and two cup holders which is super nice as well as this little cubby right here which I don't know what you'd put in there but you could as for the back you have two one of these little side cubbies and anchors as well as a 12 volt back here little tailgate vibe and then you can put the right side passenger seat all the way down from right here which is super cool so this is actually a hidden compartment if you pull it up you have a whole big area of space to put stuff it's just this little like I don't know not plastic but cover and you can actually store it in here and have a lower space kind of like a minivan to put stuff if you're worried about stuff rolling around and becoming a projectile which is important there's also a way to store this cargo cover in this area if you pull this up you put it right in here and in that side and you know on your way you go you can store your cargo cover and that's obviously your jack for emergencies so in my rear cubby i keep an ll bean picnic blanket which is waterproof and super big and i keep a windshield cleaner for snow this is a club so that your car is less likely to be stolen. However, I feel like nowadays it's not really as like common to be stolen that way. But in New York, everyone has a club, so I have I still have mine. Um, this is a big scout bag in case I need it. Gloves. Um, I don't know why I don't really wear gloves, but these are my only gloves, so I guess they're just in here. Another umbrella, a reusable bag, a sippy cup and diapers and extra change of clothes for the little girl that I nanny for that was a lot more useful when it wasn't a pandemic and we could actually go places because then you know like I have stuff in here for her but she's actually no longer in diapers and is not in this size clothes anymore actually she still fits in that so there you go I also have another non waterproof picnic blanket a microfiber towel a smaller reusable bag a first two first aid kits and a change of clothes for me which probably none of that stuff would fit but it's like good for emergencies you know that concludes my tour of my 2022 kia telluride s all-wheel drive i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already if you are looking for a dealer in the gaithersburg maryland area i highly recommend king kia in gaithersburg i worked with daniel roof he was great they are not selling at msrp they are selling a little bit above however i think that they were very fair easy to work with and i would highly recommend them so I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.